to begin, we want to look at the graph of, of a function f that's given and sketch the graph of the, that function's derivative. Uh, notice that when we're reading this uh, set of directions, it says sketch the graph of the associated slope function. Uh, we have no wiggle room. Whatever the function is, it has a particular derivative and we want to know what its graph is. And so what we're going to do is utilize uh, key observations on the graph of f to be able to get this um, correct for our graph of f prime. So the first thing to note is that um, the, the y values that are given uh, for the graph of f aren't nearly as important as the x values that are given. So we're going to go ahead and label the x values because we're really talking about what important thing is happening um, along the x-axis because uh, those are our particular values that um, interesting things happen. So uh, taking a look at our graph of f, what we have is um, we have this M looking thing that has three particular points where we have a horizontal tangent and they're pretty easy to pick out. So we've got uh, that point there that would have the horizontal tangent at um, somewhere between negative one and uh, negative two. We've got a horizontal tangent place somewhere between uh, one and two and we've got a horizontal tangent place at zero. Okay. Notice all of those values that I uh, spit out are all x values. Um, the y values aren't coming into play near, at nearly as much. And so what I have then is that the derivative at the, at the two peaks and the one valley is going to be zero. So whenever I'm graphing my derivative, those particular places are going to be zeros. So that place between negative one and negative two um, as well as the place between 1 and 2, those were our two peaks, and we have that the function for the derivative, the derivative function are going to be 0 with the two peaks, as well as the single valley there where x is equal to 0. Um, that was a valley, that's a horizontal tangent, which is telling me then that the graph of f prime is going to cross the x-axis or touch the x-axis there. So we got three places where where we're on the x-axis for f prime. Now let's take a look at what's happening in between these values. So let's first look at whenever our function is going up. So we see that um, our function here is going up to the left of that um, place in between negative 1 and negative 2, as well as between 0 and that particular place between 1 and 2. Those are the two intervals for which the function is going up. And so what we see here is that for, um, for these particular places, so we've got here, f prime, or sorry, let's go back, f is going up, which is telling me f prime is positive. And so that's happening in these two, two intervals. So since we see that the graph of f is going up, what we conclude is the graph of f prime is positive, meaning above the x-axis. So now let's take a look at what that would look like. So we've got above the x-axis um, to the left of that first root that we have. And so what we're really probably looking at is something like this where we are above the x-axis, but we're heading down towards the root as we move from, uh, from left to right. So the other thing that we have is between 0 and that, say, 1.5 area, is it's also supposed to be above the x-axis. Well, if we've got to be on the x-axis at 0, and then above, but then back down to on the x-axis at, say, 1.5, that really is all we can do is that kind of little hump, that hump that stays in the above the x-axis realm of things, but nice and smoothly gets from one zero to the next. So now the very last uh, set of observations that we're going to make is where is uh, the graph going down? The graph of the original function is decreasing, going down, on those particular intervals between, say, negative one and a half and zero, and then starting at uh, one and a half forever, it's going to be, um, that original function was going down. So whenever f, um, f is going down, f prime is negative, okay? And so that's happening at uh, this particular interval as well as this one over here. 
So we've got two intervals there where that's happening. So that's where we are going to be below the x-axis. So we are below the x-axis between negative one and a half and, and zero. But see, remember, those are our two roots. And so again, we're going to have this just kind of little blip where we are down below the x-axis, but we're nice and smoothly going from one zero to the next. And then again, when we have um, the interval that starts at negative, or sorry, positive one and a half, and then goes on forever, the original function was decreasing, which means the derivative is negative forever. And so it's probably just heading out like that. So that's um, the situation where we're given the graph of f, and we want to find information um, that would help us be able to graph the f prime function. So now look at this second example going the other way. Uh, the one difference in wording here is uh, the wording here says sketch a possible graph. See, when we're given the graph of a derivative, that same graph could be, or sorry, the derivative function could be the uh, derivative of lots of different original functions, f. And so when we're talking about a possible graph, we really have no, um, we can't, hold on to the information about the vertical shift. But we know what the shape of the function f is going to look like. So we just pick um, one that we can, um, can use as kind of our possible graph here. So now let's take a look. We have the graph of f prime. Um, so remember, the f prime sorts of things that we were concluding in the original or the first example was uh, information about where f prime was positive, where f prime was negative, and in particular where it was zero. Those were the roots. So what we're going to do here is that same, uh, or we're going to go in the opposite direction. So instead of looking at the graph of f prime and observing these peaks and valleys, what we're going to do instead is observe these roots. Because see here, we've got three roots of f prime. And wherever f prime is uh, equal to zero, we've got um, some information about the original graph. So now let's take a look. f prime is equal to zero in those three places. But to be able to figure out um, where, whether I have a peak or a valley, I need to look at what's happening around those. So see, I know that I'm going to have either like this nice smooth peak or valley at those three points, but I need to see what's happening both to the left and to the right. So that's where I'm going to get into um, the above versus below the axis for the derivative. So let's look at above first. We've got above the x-axis. Uh, there between, it looks like, um, I don't know, let's call it negative 1.2. Um, and uh, then again, starting at 1.2 to infinity. Okay, so um, I guess we should go back here and label our, our x-axis again. So we've got a negative 2, a negative 1, a 1, and a 2, because those are going to be the important places that we have to look at. So we know there that um, in between the negative, say, 1.2 and 0, my f prime was positive. So whenever f prime is positive, that's telling me my original function is going up. So that's happening on these two intervals here. So we've got this interval um, as what, that's kind of wedged between two of the roots as well as this end interval. Okay. So let's take a look at what's happening um, below the x-axis. Well, we've got below the x-axis um, there on the left side of the graph, and then we've got a set where it's below the x-axis wedged between a couple of zeros. So whenever f prime is negative, meaning below the x-axis, we've got that the original function f is going down. And so that's happening um, on these two intervals. So now we've got a way to figure out these um, what's happening at these roots. So those roots there of f prime, the the three red zeros here are the roots of f prime. And what we're seeing here at the first one that we come to, the one that's between the negative two and negative one, we see that the function is going down to the left of it, and then it moves to going up. And so if it's going to go down and then up, we've got a min there um, 
at that negative 1.2, okay? Moving on to the next zero, the next zero is at the origin there. We see that it, the function to the left of it is going up, and then the function to the right of it is going down. So if we go from going up to down, we're going to have a max. Okay. And then lastly, we're back into the situation of the min because we go from um, going down to the left of it to going up to the right of it. So we would have a min there. So as I'm drawing um, a possible graph for f here, um, given my information that I've read out um, off of the f prime graph, what I see is a min somewhere um, just to the left of negative 1. So I'm going to just happen, since it's a min, I'm going to put it down there in the um, below the x-axis. This is where I'm making a choice. Just because it's a min doesn't mean it needs to be below the x-axis, but I'm just making it that way so that I have room to draw above it since I know that that's a min. Um, I also know that I have... Um, a min that would be a little bit to the right of one. And I'm, again, not necessarily putting, I'm putting it at the same y value, really just because of the symmetry of f prime, we probably are going to have some symmetry of f as well. Okay. So then at x equals zero, we have a max value. So I'm going to put that max up here. Um, but again, it didn't have to be quite that high. We don't know. Um, that's where we're making a bit of a choice there because I'm not labeling my y-axis at all. But um, the, the only piece of information that I have um, left to be able to graph this is the information that since I read off the intervals where f prime was positive and negative, I now know the intervals where f is increasing and decreasing. And so I can just connect my maxes and my mins nice and smoothly to get a nice graph um, that would work for f. So here's our take home message. This is the, um, the things that you really have to uh, keep a hold of as you're thinking through these kind of abstract problems. Um, whenever we are talking about the f, the sorts of things we are talking about the original function were the going up versus going down. Now, depending on what is given and what we're trying to graph, we're either observing those things or drawing those things. But we are associating um, information um, about the f as the going up part. Uh, versus the going down part. Now, what goes along with that would be whenever we see that f is going up, we can conclude that f prime is um, the above the x-axis. And whenever we see that f is going down, we know that f prime is uh, below the x-axis. So another thing that I usually write just as a quick um, draw is above the x-axis, we're talking positive. Below the x-axis, we're negative. So again, depending on whether we are given the graph of f or f prime, that tells us what we're supposed to observe and then the conclusion that we would be making when we're graphing the other one. So another thing that uh, we talked about as we were going through these problems were these ideas of peaks and valleys and zeros. So realize what we were getting were uh, peaks and valleys here for f. Um, those peaks and valleys were where the slope was equal to zero. The slope of the tangent line was equal to zero. Um, so for the slope function, the corresponding things would be the zeros, or another word for that would be roots. Um, in other words, that would be where it would be on the x-axis. And so if you can keep this sort of chart information in the back of your head, um, then if you're given f, observe here, and then graph the f prime, so you would be drawing the f prime information. But then if it's the other way around, if you were uh, given the graph of f prime, observe these things, and then use that information to be able to draw the things about f. And so if you can keep that straight, then you can go in both directions um, with practice.